All right, welcome back. Um, this is question number nine. You actually would do this problem for your homework. Uh, what I'm going to try to do this time to hopefully make this uh, even better for you is I'm going to actually pull a separate part of the calculator out. So I'm going to pull my graphing calculator up here. And there it comes. And let me close out that screen capture. And let's go ahead and get started here. Now, what I'm going to do is they're asking for basically the same exact things, except the difference is, is that they want us to look at the data plots. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me for a second. Um, we are actually gonna interpret this graph. So um, to do that, let's go ahead and we're gonna look at this box plot to pull these data values out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down. And this is a key thing for us to think about. Um, we can't use our graphing calculator for this problem, excuse me, because of the fact that we're given a data display. We don't even know what these number values are in these different areas. But the reason that I wanted to make this video was because I wanted to discuss something very important. And that is, is that we're talking about quartiles. And when we talk about quartiles, quartiles represent 25%. So what I'm about to say here when we go through and identify these values is, is that I'm looking at four quartiles to this graph. This is going to be, in this area here, this is going to be one quartile. This is going to be the second quartile. This is the third quartile and the fourth quarter, and I'm, I'm sorry, not quartile, but quarter of the data. So there's four quarters to this data. Our data starts off at a minimum value. In this case right here, our minimum value is going to be 55, whereas our maximum value is going to be 95. So we have between 55 and 95, we have uh, four quarters of data and that data is evenly dispersed alright so now what we see is, is that we have a median of 70 so here's our median remember right here this is the median and that's going to be 70 so therefore at this point we're looking for the interquartile range well to be able to find the interquartile range remember we've got to find our Q1 and our Q3, and we got to be able to take those Q3 minus Q1 and subtract them. And when we subtract those, we find out that our Q1 is 65, our Q3 is 90. So therefore, our interquartile range is 90 minus 65, which is 25. Now, without being able to see this data, this next little piece becomes a little bit confusing but this is why I wanted to make a video about this because I'm going to put several questions of regarding this on the quiz itself. So let me clear up the screen for just a second here. Okay, remember a few minutes ago I talked about it being broken up into quarters. Now that means that between this location, between this location right here, our minimum, and our quartile number one, we have 25% of our data. And between our quartile 1 and our median is another 25% of our data. And between the median and quartile 3 is 25% of our data. And last but not least, between our quartile 3 and our maximum is 25% of our data. Now, some of you might be saying, well, I guess my difficulty with that statement is, is that why then when I look at my data here, between quartile 1 and the median, why is that area so small if that represents 25% of the data? Well, that means that that data is very compressed or very close together, whereas the data in between the median and quartile 3 is not, it's very spread out, and it's not very close together. So however many numbers, which we don't know, however many numbers are in this data set, what we have to think about here is, is that it doesn't matter. We know that 25% of our information is between the quartile 3 and the max, 25% is between the median and the quartile 3, 25% is between the quartile 1 and the median, and so forth. So let's take that one step further. And that one step further is this. That means that if I ask you a question along the lines of, you know, we know this is our min, and this is Q1, and this is, oops, let's uh, undo, sorry about that, that's our min, and this is Q1, and that's our median, and that's Q3, 
and that's our max. So let's ask this question. What percentage of the data is found below? What percentage of the data is found below quartile three? Okay, well, here's 25%, here's 25%, and there's 25%. So that means that 75% of the data is found below Q3. Or 75% of the data is found below 90. All right, so we can go the other way with that. So now let's just take that another step here. Let's clean this up again. And let's ask this another direction. All right, what percentage of the data is above 70? Okay, well, the 70 is at the median, so there's 25% there, and there's 25% there. So that means that 50% of the data can be found above 70. So that's key things to remember about a box plot and the way you interpret it. Like I said, there'll be several questions in the quiz regarding that concept. That concept.